having me. Uh, thank you, Ms. Heather, for inviting me, and thank you guys all for coming. Um, the topic today is uh, looking at injury, injury prevention predominantly. And uh, what I wanted to do to start it off was to emphasize that uh, it's really a nice mindset to think of yourself actually as an athlete. Okay? And you may not be wearing the track suits or the Nike shoes or the skinny suits or throwing balls. Uh, but if you think about it, what you do, the repetitive motions and particularly the stresses you put on certain parts of your bodies and the amount you train, you are an athlete. Okay? So, uh, next slide, please. So actually, violin, we're assuming everyone plays violin here, but this could apply to other uh, musical instruments as well. But actually, violinists experience injuries do happen. And, and in fact, at the prep school, that's high school level, it's not uncommon to see 35 to 65% prevalence. That means of 100 violinists, between 35 and 65 will suffer an injury at some point uh, during their high school levels. And the injury rate is actually higher in professionals, okay? Um, I wonder if this young man has an injury over there. <laughs> Most of the injuries from playing musical instruments, as you can imagine, is what we call overuse type injuries. It's basically, you do wear and tear on the muscles, tendons, various structures of your body by anything you do, to some extent. But for the most part, your body is able to not only heal that, but sometimes build up on top of that. And it's sort of a race. If your body can keep up, you never sustain any injury or pain. But if you exceed your body's ability to heal, then you will gradually wear those tissues down and usually incur an injury, which is usually heralded by pain uh, for the most part. So this is what that means, that most of the injuries that we see are overuse injuries. And the most common one of those is tendonitis. Tendons are what connect muscles to bones. And I like to think of them as organic ropes. And if you took a rope and you started to rub it against, a, say, a calcium rock, which is effectively what your bones are, over and over and over again, eventually that rope's gonna fray and maybe even break. And so your body goes, oh my gosh, I have to fix that. And it sends cells in there to try to do that. But it also sometimes creates inflammation. It's like a little chemical fire inside your body. And that's what creates swelling, redness, and pain. Next slide. Okay, so why does it cause uh, an injury? Because actually violence is pretty challenging. If you think about what you're actually doing, you're actually trying to hold an instrument with very fine coordinated finger movements, sometimes very quickly, over and over again. And you're trying to do that as, in a way that's relaxed as possible. Have you ever tried to grip something really hard? You can't do it for very long because your body starts to scream at you and says, hey, you can't do that. So if you approach your violin in that way, you wouldn't last very long practicing. Okay. So at the same time you're trying to stay as relaxed as possible and do these intricate, intricate movements, you're actually trying to use your torso to support yourself in the appropriate position. And I've seen all of you fiddling, Kelly has one as well, the, the, the chin rest to get the perfect position and, and not have to try so hard. And actually research confirms that usually what happens is it's the support muscles that tire out first because those are the ones that are again clenching a lot to try to hold the violin position. And then your posture starts to suffer. And then your hands start to compensate for the loss of posture, and that's when injuries occur. Next slide. So uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the main injuries are tendonitis, which we covered, shoulder bursitis. So tendonitis usually occurs in the, in the hand and wrist, forearm even predominantly. Bursitis is another form of inflammation that attacks these little gel packs in your body that are sort of slick, smooth surfaces for the tendons to run over. And that's basically another way of saying your body is inflamed. It's not compensating. And then very rarely we have nerve entrapments, which is where the, the arm gets a little swollen and it actually puts pressure on the nerve. And have you ever hit your funny bone? Well, that's sort of a, a big time insult to actually a nerve. It's not a bone. It's called the ulnar nerve. And it sends, as you know, those signals up into those, these two fingers right here when you do it, this, the, 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 the electric type pins and needles tingling, etc. But if you get other nerve entrapments anywhere in your arms, it can manifest in the same way. Next. Okay. Uh, females are actually, and particularly adolescent females, are more vulnerable to injuries uh, than males. And it's particularly notable for violin because if you look around the room, this is a good example of what you'll see at prep school or similar levels, uh, musician-wise. 
Uh, females generally build smaller. They're going through a growth spurt because of various hormonal changes. Uh, and uh, there's also the tendency for talented girls to skip grades, which means they're younger for the level of responsibility they're asked to assume. In other words, they're playing a lot more than other people their age would. And so you combine all those things, and it sets you up for injury. Okay, next slide. Okay. The other thing is, how many of you have a photo that looks very similar to that? Okay, I bet you a lot of you do. I know my children do, okay? But stubbornness plays a big role in injury. In other words, you either ignore it, think it'll go away. You feel like, oh, this doesn't hurt as much as going to the doctor would, okay? And doctors are not immune to that stubbornness either. We tend not to see musicians as athletes because we think you're just doing this with your donuts and your, 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 your drink. But you're not. You're actually training really hard. And that's really the message that needs to be sent if you get that reaction from the healthcare provider that you seek assistance with. Okay, next. Okay, so how do you treat it? Well, the first thing you do is you have to recognize it and acknowledge it. So if you start feeling pain, you need to acknowledge it. And the first is rest. And that is, you kind of take a break. Now, do you want to completely stop? That's relative. But you might want to slow down a little bit uh, and see how you do first. Mental training is visualization. And visualization is really important because it will allow you to continue to stay in practice without incurring physical, uh, uh, more physical damage. In fact, there's some really interesting studies. You may have heard about the free throw study where they had a bunch of kids throw free throws for practice. Some kids just sat in a corner and visualized throwing free throws, and another set of kids did nothing. They just went and did their own thing. And of course, the people who actually physically practiced improved quite a bit, but the people who just visualized it improved a substantial amount as well, not quite as much, but they were able to improve without actually physically doing anything. And that was compared to no, no progress with the people who did no practice, okay, at all. And just recently, a couple few months ago, there was an interesting study that showed weightlifting, okay? Check this out. People actually went to the weight room and did weightlifting, okay? And then they compared it to people who just visualized weightlifting but actually didn't do anything. And then they, of course, compared it to another group that did nothing. The group that actually did the weightlifting in six weeks improved strength in this muscle for this kind of exercise and this little muscle here for this kind of exercise by about 65% doing normal weightlifting, okay? Guess how much the group who did just mental exercises improved in six weeks? Zero. Ah, no, it was 35%. They got 35% stronger just by visualizing. Is that insane? That's insane. I think that's totally insane. Okay? So, mental training. Splinting is just a way of supporting that joint, okay, and keeping it some rest. Uh, ice, if you have a new injury, Ice it first, the rule of thumb. Eventually, you want to put heat on it, but if the heat hurts, go back to ice. That's really it. If you can't figure it out, ice. Okay, ice first. And then, if you come see someone like me, and you failed all those things, you might have to pull out the needles, okay? But I know you don't want to get there. So listen <laughs> first to when your body tells you you're okay. All right, so next slide. Okay, how do you prevent injury, right? Because that slide was about after you got the injury and it's bad news. How do you prevent it? Well, technique. All the things that Miss Heather's been telling you need to listen up, okay? This is a cute little slide about, I'm Captain Thumb. It's some kind of cartoon on how to position your hand on the violin correctly. But make sure your instruments fit appropriately, especially if you go through a growth spurt. Make sure you're not giving up your, uh, your technique because you're tired, of be aware of fatigue, okay? And sometimes when you try too hard to get a new fingering technique, for example, you can adopt these compensatory strategies that are actually bad. And one of them is a parasite grip, where you try to push too hard down uh, on one finger and the others try to go in and supplement that. And then it becomes this habit. You'd be surprised how quickly habits can, can happen. I was a swimmer in my youth when I was your age. And I adopted this, you know, you know the freestyle, the crawl stroke, okay? My coach noticed that instead of going through like this, I went like that. Weird, right? I think it was just because I was trying to get my head up to take a breath. But 
you don't even realize you're doing it. And so that can happen in anything, including violins. You can adapt these bad habits. So always pay attention. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, just because someone else does it doesn't necessarily mean it's good. So you need to go to a really good instructor, listen to what they say, pay close attention. There's this famous violinist back in the, I think it was the 18th century, or maybe 19th century, named Paganini, who did these amazing fingering things. And he was amazing as a violinist. And so all his contemporaries tried to copy him. Okay? They couldn't do it. And if they did, they'd be in trouble, because he had something called Marfan syndrome, which is a disease of tissue. And these folks are usually really, really tall. They're like six feet five, really tall, really long, and they're usually hyperflexible. They're the folks that can take their thumb and touch it down to their wrist and hyperextend their elbows, no problem, okay? Unfortunately, people with Marfan syndrome usually die young because the connective tissue in their body is actually not healthy. And so they usually develop problems with their blood vessels and heart, okay? Um, therefore, good biomechanics, and then of course, stretching, okay? You really want to stretch the muscles that you shorten a lot of the time. So I was just watching her practicing and realizing she does this. So you would want to stretch the other way, okay? Next slide, please. So um, another slide on prevention, strengthening, okay? And, and here, if you'll recall, I said injuries occur because the support muscles get tired, your posture suffers, and then you try to compensate with the limbs, okay? Furthermore, these guys get tired from all the activity they're doing. So if you actually then go and use them more, you might overdo it. But the torso muscles are big and strong muscles of, of, of your core here. And if you strengthen those, you can improve your endurance with good posture and therefore avoid that vicious cycle. So strengthening is a good thing to do. And lastly, remember what athletes do, right? They keep in good shape overall, aerobic exercise. Their overall level of just conditioning is good. So it's important to try to maintain that. Some form of cardiovascular fitness, some kind of aerobic exercise to keep your body humming along smoothly. Uh, that goes to another interesting study where they did weightlifting on folks. They did it just on one side. Okay? They did exercises just on one side. And no weightlifting on the other side. Okay? And believe it or not, both sides got stronger. Okay? This side got more strong than this side. But the idea is that not only are you visualizing things maybe, but also when you work out one side, your body's in build-up mode. It tries to trick it into saying, hey, we need to get stronger in general. So we're going to switch the hormones and all our metabolism to build muscle rather than tear it down. So that's what can happen, okay? So you can build yourself up. Next slide.